We're here to learn about the pen tool. Here is the TLDR. So the pen tool is great for creating complex, precise, and sharp edge selections and shapes. It's kind of one of those OG tools of Photoshop. I like to create paths usually in Photoshop, not shapes, although occasionally I'll create a shape or two. Uh, you can click to add points with the pen tool. The path is what runs in between these points that you click and add. So you don't paint with the pen tool like you would with the brush tool. You click to add points and the path runs between those points. Now, when you add a new point, you can click and drag. You pull these things out of each point that are called tangent handles. You can uh, swing these tangent handles around and that's gonna change the curve of the path. It's gonna change the way the path looks. It's the essence of using the pen tool. Now, these tangent handles, by the way, they can be adjusted later on as well. So if you don't quite get your uh, path perfect, well, you can uh, play with that later. Later on, there is no uh, rush to get it all perfect the first time around. You can use the direct selection tool to click on anchor points or segments of path. You grab those tangent handles that reappear, adjust that path. Uh, you can do it long after you finish creating your path or shape. You can use the paths panel to build out complex paths that have sections that are punched out or holes that you cut in your path. That is all very, very easy to do. You can double click on a path in the paths panel, give the path a name, and you can save it for later use. You can control and click a path thumbnail in the paths panel to load that path as a selection, or you can just select the path in the paths panel like it's a layer, and then choose to add a, an adjustment layer, and the adjustment layer will automatically take that path and use it as a vector mask. It's really easy. It's a ton of fun. So that is the quick rundown of the pen tool, but let's dive into Photoshop and really take a look. We're gonna cut out the body of this car. I tend to like to use the pen tool for big sweeping sharp edge selections like this that I wanna be able to really get in there and fine tune and have nice crisp edges on. So let's jump into Photoshop and check out how we can use the pen tool. Okay, we're using this photo of this Lamborghini here. We're gonna select the car. We want to just select the body of the car. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. We're gonna use it as, as our example to fuss with the pen tool today. So I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit uh, so we can see what we're doing. By the way, this is a free stock photo. I'll make sure I have the link for this down in the description of the video so you can follow along with exactly what we're doing here today. All right, grab the pen tool. And when you grab your pen tool, you have a couple options up here. You have the option to draw a path or a shape. Now, I don't generally do a lot of shape drawing with the pen tool in Photoshop. Um, if I'm drawing shapes with the pen tool, generally I'm gonna be an Adobe Illustrator. That's not to say there aren't reasons to draw shapes with the pen tool in Photoshop, but I'm just saying probably 95% of the pen tool usage for me is uh, creating a path in Photoshop. I'm gonna come over here and just choose the combine shapes option. And then here with the little uh, cog wheel, I'm gonna set the thickness of my path. This is just to make it easier to see the path line itself. I'm gonna set it to two pixels and I always like to tick on rubber band. This just gives you a visual of like, hey look, there's my path, right? I click and drag, see that? I can see exactly where my path is going. That's because I have that rubber band option turned on. And then also auto add delete. I believe that's default, um, but I like to make sure that's on as well. All right, you don't need a new layer. You don't need anything like that. Paths are gonna be created and stored over here on the paths panel. Uh, Photoshop will keep all that information for you. So the first thing we're going to do is begin by uh, cutting out this car. So I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit and we're gonna get a relatively rough selection here. So I'm gonna begin just clicking and every time I click, I'm gonna add what's called an anchor point and in between the anchor point it where is where the path runs. Uh, then down here, I can see there's a little bit of a curve on this part of the front bumper. So I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna drag. And what I drag out are these things called tangent handles. You can see I can add a little curve to my path. So I'm gonna add a little subtle curve just like that. Now I wanna continue drawing my path down along this part of the bumper, but you can see I can't do that because it's, it's giving me this funky curve that's coming out of the anchor point because of this tangent handle that's extending down and out. A couple things I can do here. I can hold down my alter option key and I can grab that tangent handle and move it. Like say, hey, we actually want our path to point out this way and curve a little bit like that, right? Maybe more like that is what we want. Or I can just alt or option click the anchor point straight up and just get a nice straight point for my path. And I think I'm gonna stick with the straight because again, I'll show you how we're gonna kind of tweak some of this later on. A lot of this car is um, fairly straight. So I'm gonna just stick with some straight lines. If it's not a million percent perfect, hey, that's all right. So I'm gonna come right through here. Uh, I'm sort of overshooting the edge a little bit because I know that what we're gonna try to do here is change the color of this car. Now here to get around the wheel well, we have this interesting big curve. Now. 
I do have to preface this by just saying the pen tool, using the pen tool is an art. It's very, it, it creates a very technical selection, but to get the technical selection, it's an art. There's no real great way to just explain, hey, run these mathematical equations in your head and boom, you're gonna get the perfect curve every time. It's something that you just have to practice it. And the more you practice it, the better you're gonna get at it. So I'm gonna run up here to where the curve kind of begins. And then I'm gonna try to curve up to the first uh, little uh, turn signal here. You can see there's a little bit of a curve that we need to add. So I'm just gonna click and drag. There we go, we add the curve. I'm gonna alt or option click that little anchor point. I'm gonna scoopy do around the little turn signal. And then what I can do here is I wanna get a nice curve here across the top of the wheel well. So I'm actually gonna hold down alt or option and drag out a tangent handle. This is not an anchor point. This just begins setting the direction of the path before we even draw it. You can see here, when I stop dragging, I haven't even clicked to add an anchor point and the path has already started to curve. Now that's not quite right, so I'm gonna hold down alt or option. I'm gonna adjust my curve, kinda something like that. Uh, that's a lot closer. I think I pulled it out a little bit too far maybe. And let's just try this. I'm gonna probably click way over here, something like that. And let's go ahead and, and fuss with our wheel well. Cool. And then I can always hold down alt or option, come back to my other tangent handle and say, hey, look, I'm just gonna adjust, adjust, adjust until it looks about right. And if the top part is what needs to be adjusted, then I can just hold down alter option and adjust that tangent handle, just like so. And then you just come right through here and just continue working. Now you can see this curves too much. And the reason it's curving too much is because this tangent handle is sticking out too far to the right. So I'm gonna try to keep it along that same angle and just, hey, don't, don't stick so far out to the right. I'm gonna complete the curve by clicking and dragging this down like so. If I back out a little bit, you can see what I've got. So this is essentially what you're going to do. I'm just gonna alt, alter option click and here this does not, this part of the, uh, the car does not have to be perfect. It's pretty dark. And then we have some more straight lines here along the bottom of the car that we're gonna click and drag along. And basically just, you would continue going around your car or your other sharp edged object much in the same way. Uh, just taking, taking the time to uh, work out your curves, play with those tangent handles, uh, give natural breaks in your path where you think natural breaks ought to be. And if you mess up one of the points, just uh, hit the delete key to get rid of that point and uh, try to create a new point and just kind of sort of start from scratch. Nothing wrong with that. But overall, we're just looking to get a nice clean selection of basically the entire body of the car. So uh, take some time to do that. I, as you can see, I'm rushing through this to just get this done so we can explore the next part of what makes the pen tool so special here. Okay, and just like that, we're ready to close off our path. And this is, it's as simple as this, hover over the anchor point and you click and drag and just apply that last tangent handle that is going to give you your final curve. Now, I do wanna show you one quick thing. Uh, you can see we've selected the entirety of the car. We do need to cut out some headlights and some windows, things like that. We're gonna get to that in just a second. Come over here to your paths panel and we have our path appearing here. We'll simply double click on that path and we're gonna call this car body and because that's the entirety of the car body. We're gonna deselect that path. I wanna show you something real quick that's pretty important and it's a really, really helpful trick. Two things actually. Actually. So we're gonna click and drag to, to place a, just a random anchor point here and draw just a random old shape. The one thing is when you click and drag, if you don't let go of the mouse key, uh, the mouse click, you can hold down your space bar and you can move that anchor point before you really kind of commit it. Now, obviously you can use your direct selection tool, which is the white arrow here, direct selection tool. You can always click and uh, click an individual anchor point and drag it around. Uh, go ahead and grab the pen tool. You can click that anchor point and you just pick up creating the path right where you left off. Well, let's say we create this path and we wanna come and close the shape off. You can see here, it's giving me this squirrely looking funky shape at the end. That's because this anchor point into which we're connecting, remember we clicked and uh, we clicked and dragged those two tangent handles out of it. Well, the tangent handles affect both sides of the path. We were only looking at the side that led us into our shape, but there is going to be some effect on our path as we connected on the back end. We can mitigate that or get rid of that by holding on the alt or option key and just clicking to close our path. It just kind of like sucks that tangent handle back in on the back side of that anchor point and allows us to get the shape that we're looking for. And you can see we've created a new work path here in our paths panel. I don't need that. I'm just using it to show you guys that little uh, quite essential and quite helpful thing. All right. How do we cut out the windows and the headlights and things like that? Again, I'm gonna zoom through a lot of this because it just takes time using the pen tool, but I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. We're gonna select this path. We're gonna grab our pen tool again, and 
I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna choose from this little, uh, this little icon, this drop down menu, subtract front shape. Now when I do this, if I create another path, notice I have the car body path layer selected in the paths panel. If I just like create a big shape over my car body shape, look at the thumbnail over there. Because I'm saying, hey, whatever new path I'm drawing, subtract it, punch this out of the original path that we created. You can see the original path is still there and this new funky rectangular path is on top of it. And we're punching out the entire middle of this car. Now, I don't wanna do that here, but I wanna use this in order to go in and do things like cut out the headlight. So you can begin here and you can just go through this really quickly and punch the headlight out of the car body. And I'm gonna speed the video up here and I'm gonna zoom through this, but you'll be able to see just how quickly you can go through and take a selection from just a simple shape to a very, very complex selection uh, that has whole segments of, the, uh, of your image and your graphic, whatever it is you're doing, a uh, cut out of it. And just like that, I think that's pretty much what we want to do. And of course, we can test it by just command or control clicking on the thumbnail for the paths layer. And you can see we have this complex selection now uh, that we can play with. I'm going to hit command or control D to just deselect that. Uh, but now that we have this selection, there's all sorts of things we can do. I mean, of course, we can just take the selection and create a mask and do all kinds of things. But because this is a path, I want to take advantage of the vector layer mask option. Uh, and by the way, of course, uh, you're going to see we're going to be able to zoom in on this and adjust all of this stuff just momentarily. But I have this paths, you know, layer here selected. It's not really technically a layer. It's just, it looks like a layer, but it holds all the information for our path. With that active, I'm gonna go back to my layers panel and I'm gonna say, hey, give me a solid color fill layer here. And you can see it's gonna fill the car with the color black or whatever color I give it. Let's go ahead and give it like a, a bright blue or something like that. And then I'm gonna set this color fill layer to the blend mode color. And you can see just very quickly, we can change the entire look of the car. You can double click down on your color fill layer, pick a different color. Maybe you want it to be a pink or a green or kind of this teal color, whatever it is. The teal color is kind of neat uh, and goes well with that gold and that yellow in the, the lights of the office building behind it. But at this point, here's where things get really uh, cool and very editable. You can zoom in and you can say, hey, like up here, I can still see some of that orange glow, right? You see just a little bit of that orange glow. So all you gotta do is grab your direct selection tool, select that part of the path, you can grab an anchor point, you can drag it and adjust it. Uh, you can come down here and say, yeah, there's a little bit of orange seeping through there. We need to just kind of clean that up a little bit. You can go around your entire image and just very quickly make adjustments to make sure everything is the color that you want it to be. And because this, the mask is just really this vector path that you've created using the pen tool, it's very easy to come in here and say, hey, look, I want to adjust. I want there to actually be a stripe of orange coming up around this wheel, right? I can take the path and adjust that and do something like that, right? I'm not saying that you want to do that, but I'm just saying you have the ability to do it. So the pen tool really is going to allow you to do a lot of really, really cool things like this. And of course, one final thing I'll show you here. Let's just zoom out. Uh, let's shut off our color fill just for a second. Select our background layer. Let's say you do want to make a, a selection of the car body. You can just command or control click that thumbnail. Hit command or control J. Pop it up onto its own layer. And there is the body of that car just like that. So all kinds of really, really great things that you can do. And the, the selection is always going to be saved as this editable path here in your paths panel. That is the pen tool in Adobe Photoshop. If you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you hit that like button button. Give me a subscribe if you feel so inclined. Follow me over on Instagram. I try to keep up posting some stuff over there. I'm kind of iffy, uh, but the my Instagram just got hacked, so it's all kind of brand new. Uh, so you can go check that out and follow me over there. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Learned a thing or two about the pen tool. Ladies and gentlemen, for learning all about the pen tool in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tuckvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.